She was enslaved at birth, but became the first lady's favorite dressmaker and the author of a sensational memoir that shocked the American public. So who was Elizabeth Keckley? Keckley was born on a Virginia plantation in 1818, and as a child, Elizabeth learned to sew, a skill that would serve her well. But her early years were hard. She was severely beaten and assaulted by her enslavers and others, and was impregnated against her will. She gave birth to her only child, George, when she was just 21 years old. In 1846, Elizabeth moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where she worked as a seamstress to support her enslaver's family. After saving up the money she needed to buy her freedom as well as her sons, she settled in Washington, D.C. as a free woman, where she soon began sewing for the city's elite, including First Lady Mary Lincoln. As the Civil War raged across the country, Elizabeth gained a unique perspective of life at the White House. She comforted Mary when their sons died within months of each other and founded the Contraband Relief Association to support self-emancipated refugees of slavery. In 1868, three years after the Civil War, she published her memoir. It detailed her life from slavery to self-emancipation to working as a White House seamstress. But many criticized her decision to publish the former First Lady's private correspondence as a violation of the era's strict social norms. Some even used the book to argue against Black women receiving an education. Having sold few copies, in 1892, Elizabeth took a position at Ohio's Wilberforce University. She later suffered a stroke and lived out the remainder of her days at Washington's National Home for Destitute Colored Women and Children, which she helped found. Elizabeth Keckley died in 1907, aged 89. Why is her story important to our understanding of African-American history? 